Hey, thank you for joining me this week. I have an awesome message to share with you that I think applies to every single person's life, no matter how old or how young you are, and that's about vision. It's about picturing your dreams and your goals. You know, I think it's so interesting how we get so busy, so caught up with life. I mean, we all do this with just everything we gotta do, all the errands we gotta run, the bills to pay, just everything about life, laundry, dishes, work, homework, everything. But you know, the Bible actually says, the things we see now are here today, gone tomorrow, but the things we can't see will last forever. And you know, David actually wrote in Psalms 39, four, he said, Lord, remind me how brief my time on earth will be. Remind me that my days are numbered and that my life is fleeing away. In other words, life is short. We don't have a whole lot of time to do everything that God's called us to do. In fact, the Lord actually referred to our lives as a wisp of smoke, a breath, or a mist. So I was thinking, you know, like there's your life. <laughs> it actually says life is but a vapor. There goes Terry. <laughs> There goes John. Life is a vapor. You know, compared to eternity, we don't have very long. That's not a lot of time to do everything we're supposed to do during our little vapor here on earth. Well, the Bible actually says in Proverbs 23, 18, where there is no vision, the people perish. Where there is no vision, the people perish. You know, I've, I say this all the time because I am so convinced that every single one of us have been given a clipboard or a purpose that we're supposed to carry out during our time here on earth, whatever that is, however long that span of time is, which, you know, could be just a little vapor. <laughs> we've got something we've got to be focused on. And, you know, I am so guilty in years past of just letting life just go by with no vision, <clears throat> no dreams, no goals, just existing basically year after year after year. But I believe in order for you to start heading towards what you believe God's called you to do, it starts by picturing it on the inside. Number one is you have to picture it on the inside. The reason I say that is because you've got to see something in here before you can start building something with your life. You know, when my husband and I were getting ready to build our house, we met with the builder that first day. First thing he asked us is, what do you want? And we said, well, um, I don't really know. And he said, well, first of all, tell me, what do you see? What do you see? And he meant in here, what do you see inside that would be your perfect dream house? Well, I didn't have a clue what I wanted. Rodney had thought about things. He had a few ideas, but we weren't real clear on what we wanted. And he said, you don't, you don't really have a picture of what you want? We said, no. He said, well, then go do some homework. He said, I want you to drive around, take pictures of houses that you like, that, are, that represent the style you like, the color you like, all that. He said, look through magazines, rip out pages, put it all together and bring it back to me. Well, that takes time. Like who has time to do all that when you work all day and then we'd come home from work and we'd both be tired and it's like, who wants to go get in the car and now drive around a neighborhood looking for a house that you think is pretty? <laughs> well, sometimes we just put it off, put it off, put it off. Just keep procrastinating. Well, then there were times we'd get in the car, we'd drive around, we didn't see anything we liked. And it took hours. And it was like the whole evening's gone, you don't even get to rest from working all day. And who wants to do that again the next day? So we'd put it off, put it off. Well, I believe you delay your own dreams by not being ready. I know that was our case. We'd go back and meet with the builder and he'd say, what have you got? We'd show him one little picture. <laughs> and he's, he even told us, he said, if I didn't like y'all so much, I would have asked you to leave a long time ago. Why? Because we weren't ready. <laughs> we weren't ready. We delayed our own dream house by not being ready. Well, as we finally made ourselves take the time to do the homework, go drive around, take pictures, go to the store, buy magazines, look through these books, rip out things we liked, it took time, it took money, it took thought. But you know, that's how you have to 
That's the same thing you have to do to build your dreams. It's the same principles. You don't just wake up one day and all of a sudden you're in the perfect will of God and you haven't even thought about it, nothing. It takes time, just like it takes time to build these blueprints, to draw these blueprints out. It takes time with the Lord for you to hear what's the next step he has for me. What's the big picture that God has for me that he wants me to pursue? That's going to take time. You know, they didn't just whip these blueprints out. It took time. It took money. It took an investment. Well, it's the same in your relationship with the Lord and discovering his big plan for your life. It's going to take time. But I'm telling you, you don't have years to just keep wasting and wondering, what do I do? What do I do with my life now? And, you know, every day you're preparing for something. You're preparing for tomorrow. But the question is, what are you preparing for? I want you to start preparing for your dreams. In fact, the Lord said to me one day, he said, when I know you're ready, get ready. So that just tells me there's something that we can do each day to start preparing for our dreams, to start getting ready. And I want to challenge you. It's a perfect time of year. It's a per any time is the perfect time of year, really, to just get alone with God and just listen. Just listen. And you know, just like with my house, I didn't find a house I liked right off the bat. There were hours we spent. We'd drive all the way to Dallas. We'd drive all the way to Frisco, Texas. We'd look at all these houses, and sometimes it felt like a waste of time, but it wasn't because we were narrowing down what we like, what we don't like. Every time you spend alone time with the Lord, it's never a waste of time. You need that. You need it so much, and you need to just listen. You know, sometimes it's helpful to just pray in the Spirit and then just sit quietly and just listen. Or, you know, just singing songs to the Lord, just welcome in the presence of God. Whatever it is you need to do to just create an atmosphere of peace. And then just get along with God and just listen. Just close your eyes and just listen. And anything that you feel, write it down. Those dreams, those goals, those things you see on the inside, write them down. Like the word says, where there is no vision, the people perish. If you don't have a vision, you're perishing on the inside. You're dying on the inside. That's what that word perish means. It means you're dying. I want you to get a vision for your life, and it starts by picturing it. you got to see something before you can build something. So take the time it takes. Don't ever think it's a waste of time. Preparation time is never wasted time. You know, I just came out with a new series on picturing your dreams and your goals. And I love this message because I love talking about vision. I love talking about how to set goals and how to stay focused on those goals. So in this new series, I share seven simple steps that you can apply to your life to help you go after those dreams and actually see them start to come to pass. So I want you to get this new message, especially now, so you can start preparing for the new things that God wants to do in your life. So thank you for joining me and I'll see you next time.